haven't got to start again, have we? <laughs> Affordability of energy for British people and businesses is really important. And I think a significant part of that is going to be trying to get the investment right into different assets across the energy system, from the tip of the turbine blade offshore or the hydrogen production plant and everything in between. In order to thrive in Great Britain, we need to ensure that we have all the resources in order to deliver what we need to deliver. Power is key to this as we grow our digital economy. Britain's energy future needs to be secure and reliable uh, and have diversity and flexibility in it so that it's able to cope with the demands of customers for heat, light and power whenever or wherever they need it, whether the wind's blowing or the sun's shining. And as part of that, it's a system that's going to need pipes and wires to transport molecules and electrons. And the role of the gas system in that is to engineer a sustainable gas future to deliver hydrogen and biomethane as part of that mix. So for a clean energy future, we need multiple ways to get there. And hydrogen is one part of the solution. So you need it to decarbonise heavy industry. You also need it to balance the power grid. So this is really important. In a world where there'll be an increased amount of renewables, how do you store those renewables? The energy system is, is transforming. New technologies are coming on that deliver power in, in different ways. The UK is one of the leaders in delivery of, of offshore wind. What we at NISO need to do is make sure that we integrate those into our existing energy and our electricity system in a way that drives down prices for businesses, for people, for uh, households, because energy is the lifeblood of the economy. The whisky industry itself is actually quite an energy intensive industry. We look at the grain growing in the fields all the way through the whisky making process where there's quite a lot of energy being used to actually generate the whisky through to transport and distribution and eventually into our customer's hand. People have got commercial interests to take care of, they've got businesses. But at the end of the day, if we keep trying to press looking after one single technology, one single solution, one single energy source, then we're going to be wasting our time and not getting to net zero quickly enough. When we look at costs of renewable energies, if we can't make them favourable in terms of commercials, then we're not going to consider them. We need to see what's available in terms of access to help in a collective way as an industry to be able to move forward. Now, what's going to be important is that industry and government and other stakeholders collaborate really closely as we move down these paths because the answer today won't necessarily be the answer tomorrow. Innovation is something which needs to happen at all levels across an industry. So whether it is re renewable technology or whether it is innovation in infrastructure or digital technologies or adoption of AI, they're all different types of innovation which together will drive a different future from an energy perspective. AI is responsible for a globally for approximately 3 to 4% of power consumption. It is forecast before we reach the net zero target of 2030 to be responsible for 50% of power consumption. It is not a migration of power consumption from one, from one area to another. This is an additional demand that's going to be put on the network. The overall challenge is that we need to build five times as much transmission infrastructure over the next six years than we have done over the last 30 years. The demand of the grid is forecast to increase with uh, the uptake in electric vehicles, heat pumps and what have you. Uh, and enabling flexibility will be an important agenda here. Smart metering really puts the consumer in the driving seat of their energy usage, helping them modify their behaviour. And the network will facilitate demand flexibility schemes. What we need is a single collaborative plan across the industry and to stop thinking in siloed ways across different industry groups or different types of factors. If we want to deliver net zero and get more clean power connected to the grid, there needs to be someone coordinating that and working out what projects we need where and when. So I think in the past, Great Britain could be accused of having a fragmented approach. If we're to have a single overarching body that took a holistic approach and a holistic view, of all of the challenges that are faced and are able to look at them all simultaneously, it will only help us be more efficient in delivering the growth that the network needs. So one of the great things about NISO is that it really is 
uh, a key player at the heart of the energy industry. And this is such a hugely exciting time where we're at this inflection point in tackling climate change. So having the opportunity to be in those discussions, to be part of developing that plan that will enable our energy system and indeed our economy to transition to net zero to enable us to tackle climate change, something I'm personally hugely passionate about.